According to the latest Consumer Reports, a chemical known as phthalates, so common in our food, it might as well be considered an ingredient. But you don't see the word phthalates usually on any list like this. Because according to a local researcher, those who create plastic products don't have to disclose all they use to create this. That's something Kara Wigan hopes to change as she works to advocate for more transparency. We have this chemical burden in our food that humans may not know that they're being exposed to every day. Kara Wigan is a researcher at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Her focus on plastics. It's been really fascinating, very frustrating. And it's finally getting the attention she believes it deserves. Kara recently went to Dubai with a team from UC San Diego to speak on the topic at the UN Climate Change Conference as plastic in our environment gains recognition for all the wrong reasons. They really are toxic. We don't even really know how toxic they truly are. She's referring to phthalates found in many plastics. Basically, these are plasticizers, which are chemicals that are put into plastic to make them more flexible, which is often what our food products are wrapped in. The plasticizers help make plastic do things like this, be really flexible, bendy, your oat milk, Greek yogurt, you'll see it in peanut butter, even things like fruits and vegetables wrapped in this type of plastic. These chemicals are actually not molecularly bound to the plastic, which means they're not sort of attached to the molecular structure that makes up the plastic, which means they can just free float. Take this box of Cheerios, for example. It has this plastic bag inside the cardboard box. Now, because of this plastic bag, according to Consumer Reports, a serving of Cheerios has about 11,000 nanograms of phthalates. So I did some math here. If you have a bowl of cereal every day for 10 years, that'll equal about 40 million nanograms of phthalates. That's about 40 milligrams. That equals about 40 grains of salt, which may not sound like much at all, but consider this. That latest report also says there are phthalates in most packaged foods. There is a bit of good news. Our body can process, metabolize, and get rid of these chemicals pretty fast. I think some studies say about two days. But the not so good news is we're exposed every day and nearly all we do. So our body doesn't have the chance to clear plasticizers out of our system. And now studies show they hurt our health. What we know for sure is that they're decreasing male, male fertility over time, especially when you're exposed through your entire life. Kara points out it's especially important to reduce exposure to babies since they're most sensitive to reproductive changes. The U.S. is phasing out phthalates from children's toys, so at least that's something. Legislation around the world really needs to ban them or at least start phasing them down. And now these plasticizers, they're not just in our food, they're in our beauty products too. Oh. Yeah, all this bendy plastic phthalates. Lotion, makeup, shampoo has this in it. Right now researchers are working on alternatives to plasticizers, but in the meantime, you can consider buying things in bulk, for example, or from farmer's markets instead of packaged foods, or if you do, need to get packaged uh, foods, glass. foods, glass, silicone, those things reusable, they're yeah, better, okay. they don't have the plastic that's free floating and coming off into the product itself. It's good to know some of the baby products out there are phthalate free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those companies understand the, the risks right. involved, but as we are aging it's and older It's slowly phasing out, right, out of children's yeah. products. But as adults, I mean, once you're, what, age five and up, you're mm -hmm. exposed to it in so many ways, and there's snack food, mm -hmm. everything. Those companies are just trying to get mass products mm -hmm. out as quickly as possible. Right. Yeah. It probably took until more recently for oh, it yeah. to become known mm -hmm. how impactful it was on our health. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's so hard for uh, a lot of these chemists to figure out what's even in the packaged right. products. Right. So they don't disclose that what they're using to create these types of things. Mm -hmm. So even figuring out what is it, what how does it impact us takes so long. So we're now finally yeah. seeing things we've been doing for decades wow. are hurting us. I know it's us. like nanograms yeah. and it seems very small, but when you mm -hmm. put that, that mount in your hand, you're like, that's plastic in your in body. Your body. Yeah. You think about that. Over and over and over again. Yet and another yeah. reason why those farmers markets are yeah. so great. And buying Same in bulk, thing, like yeah. right? when you're eating mm -hmm. processed yeah. foods, those are m foods that are more likely to be packaged in plastic. Right. It is more so. convenient. I get it. I mean, we have mm -hmm. kids, packaged food is what right. they get for right. snacks, but yeah. uh, keep it in mind. Just something to try to adjust in your daily routine. Yeah. 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 We'll okay. keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you, Nana. And that. water bottles, plastic water bottles. Oh my gosh, yes. Don't get me started on water bottles. As we say every day, right? Okay. Uh,